Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to another day in the fish room. So I have a lot to show you guys today. As always, there's always a lot of stuff going on down here, including some new monster fish down there in quarantine. But yeah, I have a lot to show you guys and we'll start things off by looking at this 40 gallon reef aquarium. Um, I told you guys I'm starting to break down tanks because eventually this whole wall is going to be one giant aquarium. But before I get there, I got to start breaking down some aquariums. So yeah, I had this entire setup for sale at a pretty low price but somebody just wanted the livestock luckily that person has an established 75 gallon reef aquarium so my fish my corals they go into a bigger tank with somebody that is very knowledgeable so that's good so my duncan my trumpets everything is gone the only thing he didn't want was the yellow polyps and that's because i warned him that these things are just crazy when it comes to growing you can see that they are everywhere so once i get rid of these yellow polyps and of course the few um, hermit crabs that I managed to hide when I was collecting the rest this tank will no longer exist And I showed you guys these fish in the last video my jaguars male jaguar right here Female she's behind that rock and look at all these babies Now the good thing is that there are no other fish in this aquarium So these babies will grow up unless the parents go crazy and eat them. That's the female. But yeah, now I have a bunch of jaguars Like I said these jaguars might become feeders. I know a lot of you guys said you wanted some but I have some new fish. Some of them are picky eaters, and these jags had babies just in time. Look at this fish, it's just amazing. That's my Cuban cichlid. Now, I don't show it a lot because it is pretty shy, but look at those colors. Now, we're gonna get to the unboxing of the fish that I have in quarantine in this tank. I unboxed them yesterday. Um, all of these fish, there's three of them. All of them are monster fish, two of them are cichlids, and some of the largest growing cichlids in the world. Now on that topic, if you go to Google and you type in the top 10 largest cichlids, they have a list. You can see that list on different forums, different articles, even on different YouTube videos. And I just honestly don't agree with that list as far as those being the top 10 largest cichlids. So I figured let me make my own list from my experience of the cichlids throughout the entire world that get the largest. So before I show you guys the unboxing, uh, I want to give you guys a look at my opinion of the top 10 largest cichlids in the world. Okay everyone, so going from bottom to top, the 10 largest cichlids in the world. Um, number 10 would be the Malawi trout, which reaches about 18 inches. This is a Lake Malawi predator cichlid. Um, after that, number nine, we have a species of Boca chromis. I can't pronounce it right, but if you want the full pronunciation, you could go to Adam C. He pronounces these names like a champion. He keeps these Malawi predator cichlids. This is another cichlid coming from Lake Malawi, also a predator and both this one and number 10 can reach about 18 inches. The eighth largest cichlid is the Feste cichlid, which is a cichlid that comes from South America. And the males, the males will get larger. Most of these fish on this list, the males are the ones with the size. And the male Feste can reach about 20 inches. For number seven, we have the Jaguar cichlid. Now it says that the Jaguar in the wild could reach 24 inches, but in captivity, they'll reach about 20 inches. After that, we have the Nile tilapia. A lot of people forget this fish on the list. These are some African cichlids, not from the Great Rift Lakes, but they do come from West Africa and lakes around Africa. And um, these fish can reach 24 inches. I've seen them 24 inches at my local supermarket because these fish are sold at farms and these are some very large cichlids. After that, you have the Umbi cichlid growing to about 24 inches of every famous fish being the fifth largest cichlid in the world. After that, you have the Dobai cichlid. This is the fourth largest cichlid in the world, able to reach about 28 inches, and this fish is known for its aggression, said to be the most aggressive cichlid out there. I've heard many stories about this fish, and um, definitely a fish I like to keep and experience for myself. For the third largest cichlid in the world, I actually have a um, family of cichlids, the peacock bass. We all know that they are a few different types of peacock bass and some of them can reach 30 inches and the following peacock bass are in my opinion the third largest cichlids in the world so we have cichla acelaris cichla mono cichla azul cichla orinoco and cichla melani now there are a couple of other peacock bass that they say could reach 30 inches but these are the most common the second largest cichlid in the world is the emperor cichlid 
Now, there's gonna be a lot of questions about this because everywhere you look, people say that this is the largest cichlid and there's no fish that comes close. The emperor cichlid comes from Africa and it can reach about 36 inches. But just recently I read that there was a fish larger than the emperor cichlid, than a recorded size of the emperor cichlid, and it was the cichla tamensis peacock bass. So we're back with peacock bass again. And um, they said that they caught a peacock bass 36 inches, same length as the emperor, but it weighed more than the largest emperor ever caught. So I read this in an article. I didn't actually see any photos or weigh it myself. But you know me, I'm a peacock bass guy. So I'm going with the one I prefer. So in my opinion, Cichla Tamensis bass is the largest growing cichlid in the world. But you know, that's my opinion based on research that I did of the largest growing cichlids in the world. Of course, let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. But if you're new to the channel, I do keep some of those fish that were on that list. Of course, I keep the jaguars that you saw earlier. I have peacock bass, three different species of the ones that I said were the third largest growing fish. We have Cichla orinoco. Um, back there we have Cichla azul and we have Cichla ocellaris. Um, upstairs I have the now tilapia, three of them. Um, I used to keep a feste, but he was too aggressive. So I do have my experience with some of those larger fish. But now let's get to the unboxing to see what I have today. Now this unboxing definitely was a rush. It was a very scary unboxing. These fish were shipped out on a Thursday. They arrived at my local post office on a Saturday. I expected them to be delivered, but they weren't. And the delivery, the tracking number said that it was going to be delivered on that Monday. By the time Monday came around, I tracked it. And said that it was delivered on Saturday and I definitely did not get the package so I'm going crazy um, so far on Monday it's been like five days I'm calling the post office no answer I filed a missing package report the next day I get a call saying that they're looking for it and then it came on that Tuesday so these fish spent six bags in a day or rather six days inside of a bag when they were intended to only spend two days in a bag so it definitely was a scary unboxing so first out of the bag, we have a fire eel. I bought this fish simply because I saw a lot of videos and um, this fish looks very entertaining. After that, we have a dovi. Now this is crazy because we all know dovis are some of the most aggressive fish in the world. And then finally, we have Cichla tamensis peacock bass. As I showed you guys, the largest growing cichlid in the world. And once again, this is a fish that I bought for my large aquarium. Of course, it's never a good idea to buy fish for a tank that you don't have, but I definitely do plan on building this aquarium. And I figure, I don't know how long it's gonna take this fish to grow up. I do want him to be able to go into the tank once it's built. So yeah, I just bought him today. And um, he's looking good after being six days inside of a bag. This is the package that was supposed to come yesterday. Uh, no, actually, it's supposed to come Saturday. What's this one? A dove. How big? How does mm -hmm. it get? Bro, big. I'll show you a picture. And this right here is the 20 gallon quarantine tank that they're remaining in. So, um, right away, you can see the Cichla tamensis bass. This fish is very tiny, only about two inches. Um, so far, not really eating as he should because these fish are very picky and most of the time he spends his day just staring at this tank you don't have the small fish and these fish being predators so um i may have to put something between these tanks so that he can't see in there and eventually hopefully he accepts some blood worms or some raw fish i don't want to get him on feeders i know that he will accept feeders without hesitation but um none of my other peacock bass eat feeders and it definitely will be awesome to know that this guy is not on feeders as well then you saw the dovi. This fish is eating like crazy. He actually has a very plump, plump belly if he turns to the side. He was showing some aggression towards the peacock bass when I first added them, but then the peacock bass fought back, surprisingly. But yeah, if it's a female, it should be able to stay in the community forever. If it's a male, by the time it reaches about six inches, I'm gonna have to start thinking about keeping it solitary. But he's, um, hopefully she, but it is very, um, willing to eat and then over there I have the fire you know you can see his head underneath the sponge filter he is nocturnal when the lights are off I can see him swimming around but of course the lights being on he's gonna hide my ghost knife did the same thing and eventually I read that these fish as they get older 
as they get more bold and comfortable, they will be more active. So far, I treated them for parasites because that's my normal routine when I get new fish. When they are being shipped, they are in very stressful situations, especially these being in the back for six days. So I'm treating them for parasites. Um, eventually, the, do the dovi, he's going to go inside that 75 gallon aquarium. The fire eel, I'm not sure yet because I want to get them in the tank where I can keep them eating. If I put them in this tank, um, he could go inside one of these caves and it will definitely be very challenging to get him something to eat. So I got to figure out what to do with him. And the peacock bass, I definitely got to be cautious of where I put him because this fish will grow, will grow very fast and will potentially eat tank mates if I put them with fish too small. So I have to figure out what to do with those two. But yeah, that's these fish in quarantine. Now this right here is my 75 gallon grout aquarium. I actually have a couple of fish that you guys never met. Um, some of them that came in last week, some of them that came out of my backyard pond, but this video is getting kind of lengthy. So I think I'll save that for next video. But of course we have a pair of convicts. Look at that, male and female. They're about to have babies. They built a little nest over there. So maybe by the, by the time I give you guys the next update, maybe we'll have some fry, but yeah. New fish in here, you saw those new fish, a lot going on. Make sure you subscribe, don't miss any of it, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.